Gentlemen, we've been doing the Manlyhood Mancast for quite a while now, and now we are officially entering Season 6. And I am so excited about this, and I can't wait to tell you all of the awesome things that we are bringing to you this season. So listen, I want you to stay tuned, because we're going to talk about it right after this. Warning, applying these principles may change your life. People will look at you differently. You'll walk straighter, live bolder, and find out who you are. This is the Manlyhood Mancast. Here's your host, Josh Atcher. Gentlemen, welcome to season six of the Manlyhood Mancast. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am that you have stuck with the work that we're doing here at Manlyhood. Listen, we are launching this year something amazing, and I'm really excited to be able to tell you about it. It is the Arrows and Iron Brotherhood. Now, we're still putting the finishing touches on it, but what this is going to be is a community where you can truly level up. We're going to get some coaching. We're going to get some courses. We're going to get access to all of the things that I have created over the years, all of the books I've written. There's all different levels of access for you so that if you are someone who can afford a little bit, we've got something for you. If you're someone who can afford a little more, we've got something for you. So we've got different levels of this and it's going to be launching a little bit later in this season. But what I want you to do is I want you to Sign up for it if you're interested in it, because this is not just like the Manlyhood Man Cave, which we do, which is great. It's free, and there's a lot that you can learn there and a lot that you can get connected with. That's our private Facebook group. This is the next level. This is where you are really going to be able to level up as a man. You're going to have content that's going to help you. You're going to have connections that will help you. We'll have live coaching calls once a month, and yeah. This is going to be good stuff, gentlemen. So if this is something you want to get plugged in with, I want you to go to manlyhood.com slash brotherhood. And just give us your email address and we'll let you know as soon as this thing is ready to roll. But listen, today is about more than that. Today is about the launch of season six. Listen, this has been, the last season was transformational for my own life. The information that I learned talking to these guests, talking to you, And watching my dream of making manlyhood happen happen has been something pretty amazing. I've been able to talk with some amazing people. And so what I want to do before we jump into the awesome things coming in Season 6, let's have a quick recap of Season 5. So we started out the season with some pretty awesome interviews, and I'm just going to share a few clips from some of those interviews for you today. So let's look at one of my favorite interviews was with Judge Joe Brown. Some of you guys know him from his syndicated television show where he uh, is better than Judge Judy. (laughs) And he's quick to tell you that too. My interview with him is definitely um, interesting. I don't necessarily agree with him on everything, but I do respect his views. And I think it's pretty cool to be able to talk to somebody with whom I might not agree on everything. Honestly, I think I agree with him quite a bit, but maybe not with how he says it. (laughs) That being said, here's a clip from Judge Joe. We need home training. And see, I look at kids and I look at them and say, what the devil happened here? Did anybody train this child? Why do you expect this kid to act appropriately when you are out in public with him or her and that kid won't even act appropriately at home because you didn't train them? Why are they teaching these kids? What are they showing these kids? A burlesque of womanhood. It's insulting to womanhood. Women, the women I know, and I know a lot of them, and my dating group is from 75 on down to 40. I don't know too many of them that go around acting like harlots, but what do they do with the drag queens they show these kids? Does grandmama look like that? Hope not. So what are you doing? Women and children in the lifeboat first. 
it takes a lot to be out on the Titanic. It's freezing. There's nobody around to rescue you. It's pitch dark. There's an iceberg that just took your bottom out. You're sinking. And it takes a lot to say, ma'am, please be my guest. You and your children have my place in this lifeboat. I'm going to drown. That takes a lot. And a lot of people these days feel too entitled to what they have, too accustomed to and acclimated to their entitlements to understand that they're only worthy of it if they're willing to defend it, that they're willing to push what is necessary so these entitlements remain, so that the safety bubble in which they find themselves today does not quickly evaporate. One of our most commented on podcasts, one of the things that I had the most feedback from a lot of people came from Dr. Ellen Reed. Now, she has worked with Dr. Jason Selk. They were uh, mindset and performance coaches for the St. Louis Cardinals, amongst other things. And she co-authored a great book with him. And I really appreciated this interview because it gave a lot of ability to focus on what's most important. And so let's listen to this clip with Dr. Ellen Reed. I've been um, working with Dr. Jason Selk for 15 years now. And Jason was actually kind of got his big start as the sports psychology director for the St. Louis Cardinals baseball team. And I started working with him right around when I was in graduate school, getting my doctorate in psychology. And he was just about to start with the Cardinals and I, we kind of crossed paths and he needed someone to come on and help him more with like administrative things. And so that's what I started doing for him. And I was the perfect fit because I really didn't know or care anything about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and so my job was to call all of these superstar players on the Cardinals and confirm their appointments with Jason when I was still in school studying. So. When his start with the Cardinals kind of happened and he had around the same time had written a best-selling book called 10 minute toughness that was geared towards athletes and teaching athletes, the mental toughness that gives them that edge over their competition and leads them to their peak performance. Um, his business really started to take off and people started picking up this 10 minute toughness book and whether they were athletes or not and saying you know hey this stuff really works in my professional life you figure out what it is you want to accomplish and we call that the vision you know what is it that you want out of life and then what do you need to be doing every day to get there and i know that sounds very simple but you wouldn't believe how many people are not doing those things or who don't even know what it is that they want to be doing or that they want to accomplish. And so in this framework of vision plus that integrity piece of what do you need to be doing every day in order to achieve that vision, the results become really simple. Some of you may be familiar with the Order of Man podcast with Ryan Mickler. He's doing great work uh, at that podcast as well. You can go to orderofman.com if you want to know more information. One of his, uh, let's call him a partner at Order of Man, is Kip Sorensen. He does a lot of the Ask Me Anything podcasts with him. And I have really appreciated Kip's wisdom over the years as I've listened to that podcast. So we were able to get Kip as a guest on our podcast. Let's listen to what Kip has to say. I think our generation has been, a lot of us probably got beat up a lot by our parents when we were kids. <laughs> and I think that pendulum has swung way too far. And now we're like, oh, no, no, we don't discipline our kids in any form of, you know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah, I think, yeah. I don't know. I, I think maybe we've gotten too soft on our kids. One thing's for sure. Like, that's why... I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm overly competitive, but no, if, I, if my kids started getting too good at jujitsu where they could take me, <laughs> it would bother me. It would bother me. I'm oh, like, yeah. no, no, no. My job is to always be able to kick your ass. Greatness is made through suffering, right? Like the, there is no learning and growth in anything other than difficulty. A price must be paid, right? Whether it's gymnastics, whether it's 
learning about what's important in life or anything else, right? There's always, you know, that's where growth lies, right? So is in, in the in the uncomfortable. People have no idea what they're doing to young men um, and and how we're setting them up for a complete failure, right? We have we have a society that will demonize that that if if you're a male, it's okay to demonize you. And then if you're white male, it's even even better. And we'll, but we won't call that sexist. We won't call that racist. We'll just call that okay. And man, the, and the repercussions of it are just, it's sad. A kind man that is only kind because he's weak is not a kind man. A dangerous man that makes a choice to be kind. That's something to be honorable about. Take a dad out of the house, man, the, the probability of success for kids drastically drops everything from jail time to graduating high school, to success in life, probability of getting married in the future. All the stats are horrible. The minute you remove a dad from the house and the, and the reason why is because they need a masculine presence in the home. Right. And this is one of those sayings. And this is where everyone gets sideways. Like, will moms, are, no, they're not the same. Like stop trying to make men and women the same. They're not the same. Here in the Manosphere, there are a lot of guys doing a lot of amazing things. One of the things that was exciting to me about this season is as we were doing this season, our podcast stats started to climb, and we actually hit uh, in the top 50 podcasts for men, which that's a pretty big accomplishment. I'm hoping that this season we can make it to the top 25, maybe the top 10. Let's shoot big, right? Let's make it happen. One of our guests is uh, sharing some similar company. He's also in that top 50, probably the top 25. And that is Josh Tyler from Savage Gentleman. As much as I needed to prove to whoever needed it, and, and more importantly, myself, it's like, okay, I've, I've fought and, and trained with some of the best guys in the world. I know where I stand in the pecking order. Could I continue to do this and make a living? Absolutely. Could I climb higher in the ranks and make a larger name for myself in the sport? Absolutely. But at what cost? And that's that's the thing that we have to weigh out is, is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Man, this whole thing comes to a grinding halt. We as men, we as the, the, the humanity just, you know, hit the brakes right on. And if no one is willing to work with other people, teach them things, show them things, and and in the same respect, that's how we learn as well. I've learned more teaching and coaching others about wrestling, about fighting, about business, about, you know, this idea of masculinity and manliness than I ever have just trying to absorb it, right? There's something to be said for taking an idea and, and, and helping someone else conceptualize it the, the way that solidifies it in our own mind, right? We, we see these, you know, fraction of a percent of success stories and we're like that's that's it man i'm just, I'm just gonna be gary v bro i'm gonna be tony robbins and it's like hey you're not gary v you're, you're not tony robbins so the things that they did in exact format that they did them maybe is it the best thing right i'm not saying that those guys don't have good advice and i'm not saying that their strategies won't work for everyone but again completely selling out to that idea if you don't have to, you know, is, is not the wisest decision in my opinion. Again, at the end of the day, I tell this to guys all the time, you know, when I'm coaching them and fighting, I'm like, Hey man, here's what I would do. Here's a technique that I like, but it's your freaking face, dude. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not the one who's going to get punched in the face if I do or don't do this, this technique. So your call. Another one of my favorite guests was actually a kid that I went to school with. His sister was in my grade, and we were friends. He was a couple years older, and he rode the school bus with me every morning. And uh, interestingly enough, bus 45 coming out of Rollette, Pennsylvania, going to Port Allegheny, Pennsylvania, was actually full of some very well-accomplished and uh, interesting people. And uh, they weren't all necessarily uh, famous some of them are infamous, <laughs> but it was a very cool experience riding the bus with those guys every morning. I can't say I appreciated it fully then, but I can appreciate it fully now. Anyway, that this guest is Isaac Greeley, and he is actually the 
world champion of Nogi Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for last year, for 2021. And he's an amazing guy. He's got an amazing story. So let's just listen to this clip from him. Yeah, you know, I'm 45 years old. I still compete uh, in myself. And um, I consider myself, you know, probably at the top of my game right now at 45. Um, which is crazy. I never would have thought that even, you know, when I started doing this 20 years ago. So I've been lucky to use my profession to kind of fuel my, my career and kind of my longevity as a competitor. Pretty much all my life lessons have been learned on the mat. Uh, I think it just accelerates a lot. I got really lucky uh, when I was in college, you know, when I went to Pitt Johnstown, I had a great upbringing, had great coaches, coach Kreiner, you know, coach Kreiner was my, was my coach. Um, he led me in a lot of directions. And the one thing that he taught me that sticks with me to this day that I preached to a lot of my kids is, you know, use wrestling as a vehicle in your life. It's, it's a great vehicle to steer you in the direction that you want to go. And that's the one thing about wrestling that really helped me. I went into college as an 18 year old kid. And I mean, kid, I was a child. I, yeah, I had a lot of growing up to do. When I graduated as a 22 year old, I really feel like I was a man at that point that I could handle a lot of things in my life. Um, with the help from my teammates, my parents and my coaches, I think that that four or five years of my life was super beneficial for everything else that's happened after. And the last clip that we'll share is from one of my other favorite guests that we had on the show, and that is DC Glenn from Tag Team. When this connection happened, I just, the, uh, you know, seventh, eighth grade me was freaking out because I loved these guys when they came out in the 90s, loved the song Whoop There It Is that Tag Team put out, and DC Glenn was a part of that. Years later, they got picked up for a Geico commercial about ice cream, and uh, that was a pretty cool experience. But having the chance to talk to DC Glenn and pick his brain a little bit and see what makes him tick was pretty awesome. To see his sense of having a dream and shooting for it and the way that he... Uh, breaks down his goals and just says, we're going to do this. We're going to make this happen. It was a very awesome interview. So let me just share this little clip with you from DC Glenn. There's always somebody telling me, DC, you can't do everything. I'm like, you know what? You're probably right. But I sure enough can be prepared for everything. It's like, you know what? That makes sense. I'm just, I just shake my head because I'm like, you don't even realize that the very thing you just disapproved of is the same thing you now approved of said differently. You know, I tell people all the time, I love being wrong and love admitting I'm wrong. Now inside, I'm dying. I'm like, ah, I'm wrong. Ah. I hate it, right? But what that does, does two things. It sequesters your ego and your pride. For men, you know pride is an issue. You try to win an argument, you go down a rabbit hole, you'll make up stuff just so you can win an argument. I get how many people you know like that, right? Just want to argue, just want to be right. That's that's one, but you sequester that, and then now your mind is open to everything else. You're not wasting time going down a rabbit hole of untruth to yourself. Your oh, your mind is open to seeing the opportunities, and then being wrong is the path to being right. You don't plant a seed. Sit down and watch it and be like, grow seed, grow. Why aren't you growing seed? The seed don't work. I quit, right? We know a lot of people like that. And what they don't realize is that you just plant that seed and keep it moving, right? Just plant that and keep it moving. And I've been planting seeds and hustling and grinding and learning and doing all these things. And I don't even think about it. And now I stand before you in a force of opportunity unimaginable the sheer variety of things that I get to do as a rap artist is just across the board. So seriously, season five was a real accomplishment, despite some major challenges that happened for me in the middle of this. I had the opportunity to get my eyes fixed. I had cataracts. And so as we started this season, I could see as this, uh, I could see a little bit as the season progressed, I started to lose my eyesight, because these cataracts were pretty rapidly forming. And the eye doctor said, hey, look, if you want to have this surgery, you've got to have, you got to lose some weight in order for the risk to be down. 
And weight loss is an issue that I've struggled with for a long time. And so I just said, all right, let's make this happen. So I took a slight break from part of the podcast, the uh, the section of the podcast where I once a week give you my thoughts on things. Uh, and we just focused on the podcasts that featured uh, our guests towards the end of the year, towards the end of the season. And that was great, but I definitely missed being able to share with you my thoughts and my insights. So I'm really looking forward to this season being able to do that. And, uh, you know, the good news is I had my eyes fixed. Um, and that was a, a really crazy experience. Uh, I can now see 2020 in my left eye and I can see 2030 in my right eye and that's improving. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. So I am no longer blind <laughs> and I've got a start, a good head start on losing weight. I've got more to go. So you know, I'm working ahead on season six. I've been doing interviews for quite a while now. So it's really funny because if you're watching these interviews, you're probably going to see me not shrink as fast as I will continue to shrink as I'm working on my weight loss. So my goal is a year from now, I want to lose 100 pounds. So when you see me at the end of this season, you might be watching videos from the earlier in the season, but as you watch, hopefully we can see the progression. So as I lose 100 pounds, let's see what we can do here. Let's make it happen. As we're heading into season six, guys, we have got some amazing guests, and I'm just going to share with you a couple of clips from them. We've got best-selling authors, syndicated radio show hosts. We've got coaches, podcasters, teachers, athletes, doctors, all kinds of guests for you here on season six. So what I want to do is I want to share with you just a couple of clips from some of the interviews that I've been doing that you'll get to see in the coming weeks. The first one is Dr. John Deloney, who's got uh, the John Deloney show. He's a fantastic guy, a part of the Dave Ramsey organization. And uh, he has a radio show where he talks about mental health. This interview is amazing. Let's just share a little clip with you. It's, it's important to just to step back and look at the biology, right? So our brain's made up of, and I'm being super crude here, but three big chunks, right? The midbrain and the forebrain and the, the they call it the lizard brain. And the forebrain is the, the big front part, right? The cortex, the neocortex, all that. And that's basically where we get our thinking about thinking, the metacognition. We're thinking about tomorrow, our planning, our, is this a good idea or not a good idea, right? Um, the part, no, the amygdala part is the part that just keeps us alive. The part that is always scanning the environment 24-7, 365. Where are we safe? Do we got other people around? And um, are we in control of what happens tomorrow? And I'm oversimplifying it for a read, but that's basically it. And here's the challenge. Those two parts of our body don't always work together. Here's what I mean by that. We will see a picture of somebody who's the president of a company and they make $300,000 a year. And we think, I want that. So I'm going to go get that degree. I'm going to get those suits. I'm going to try to get that car, even though I don't make that kind of money. I am going to put myself in a position to appear like that. And along the way, we're making decisions like taking out a car loan we can't afford, um, buying suits that instead of exercising, and we in, or I'm going to work 20 hours a day for the next five years so I can prove to these guys that I'm worth them in, investing in me. And your body's saying, hey, you got to sleep, man. A hundred percent of the psychiatric illnesses um, have disordered sleep as one of the characteristics. I mean, you got to sleep. Um, you got to not fill your body with trash. You got to exercise and move your body. You've got to have intimacy in your life. And so your, your brain that is scanning the environment for threats knows, hey, whoa, 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 we're not safe. We are not okay. We are not okay. We are not okay. We are not okay. And it begins to raise the temperature a little bit in the room. Right. And that forebrain, though, it is going and going and going. It is charging along. And then it gets its steady feed of uh, social media, like encouragement, crush it, and dominate. And eventually your body says, I'm out. Speaking of the Ramsey organization, we've also got Ken Coleman, who does, I'm going to call him a career advisor. He's also got a syndicated radio show, uh, is a best selling author, and uh, his. He talks a lot about how to make your dream a reality when it comes to your career. So he's got some really great advice. Adaptability is probably one of the greatest soft skills there is. This attitude of, listen, change is a part of life. And, and if I'm going to be a serious person, 
and make progress in my life, the very nature of progress means change, something new, something unknown. It's just part of the deal. And so learning to develop a muscle, an attitude muscle called adaptability. Okay, you know what? I'm going to adapt. As a human, I have all of the instincts built into me to be great at change. So the only thing that's holding me back from being adaptable is my attitude, my, my, my mindset. So that's just a sneak peek of a few of the interviews that we're going to be doing in season six. I am so excited. I want to tell you what else we're going to be doing. So instead of having, we're still going to have two episodes a week. And one of those episodes will be an interview. And one of those episodes is going to, going to be on a rotating basis. So each month you're going to get a different feature in that other slot. It's going to be a different feature each week. So one of the things we'll have is a segment that's called Chunks of Manly Wisdom. You may be familiar with um, the ebook that I assembled uh, called Chunks of Manly Wisdom that has 500 quotes for men. So with Chunks of Manly Wisdom, the podcast, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some quotes from some amazing thinkers and philosophers and quotes about certain topics that we're going to get into. And then we'll break down and I'll give you my thoughts on those. Honestly, this will be something kind of exciting as well. I think this is one of those things where I am a big fan of quotes. And the reason why is uh, I have a short attention span. And for me, just to grab a long book and read it, uh, I will and I do. But I find it uh, a little bit laborious, and I know that a lot of my listeners might be like, dude, I cannot read, you know, War and Peace. <laughs> you know, Tolstoy is just out of the question. I don't have that amount of time to commit to reading that much of a book. So guess what we can do? We can pull out the best thoughts that a person has to offer, and then we can focus on that. So yes, reading books is awesome, but if it's too much for you, we can find the chunks of wisdom that are hiding in it. So that's what we're doing with Chunks of Manly Wisdom. Think of it as the cliff notes for life. One of the other features that we're going to be doing is called Fight Club. This I am so excited about. And by the time this airs, we will have actually had our first Fight Club. What we're going to do is get a bunch of guys together in my living room, and we're going to hang out and have some sausage and cheese and pepperoni and we're gonna talk about life and we're gonna talk about what's happening in the world around us and we're gonna goof off and have a little bit of fun uh we might get into a little bit of debate we might have some disagreements we're gonna have a good time uh we might get a little bit loud but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna stream that live on our facebook page while it's happening and then we'll take that broadcast and we will re-air it as a podcast episode and on our YouTube channel. So that's Fight Club. That'll happen once a month. One of the other features that I'm kind of pumped about, and this one, <laughs> this one I love. This one we just had our sponsor sign on. So Bird Forge and Haynes Knives, the same same place there, uh, is going to be sponsoring this segment of our podcast, which we're going to call Testicular Fortitude. What we do is we're going to feature a historical portrait of a man with balls, <laughs> testicular fortitude. I am really looking forward to this, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So that is going to be a, a really cool experience as we as we grow this podcast and build it out. There's going to be lots of other little uh, places for some fun stuff to happen as well. So please make sure that you subscribe to this podcast. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on social media because... I'm going to be bringing you some amazing information each week, twice a week. that will be transforming your life if you let it. I'm hoping it can help me transform my life. That's why I do this because it's not about me preaching at you or me telling you what to do or me saving you. I can't save you. I am not a, a mental health expert. I am not a best-selling author. I am not... Uh, Somebody with enough wisdom to really change your life. And honestly, a best-selling author, a, even a mental health expert, or a, an outright hero can't really save or change your life. It starts with you. And so I've already told you what my big goal is this year. I want to hit the top 25, maybe top 10 if we're ambitious, podcasts for men. And I want to lose 100 pounds. That's my goal for this season. So 
at the end of August next year, let's see that happen. What are your goals? How are you going to grow? How are you going to transform? I want to hear about it. So for right now, you can go in the Manlyhood Man Cave, which is our private Facebook group, and you can send a request to add the group. I would love to have you there. And when you do that, hop in there, and we will be encouraging each other and helping each other and prodding each other along with our goals. But I want you to tell me what your goals are for the next year so that when Season 7 of the Manlyhood Mancast rolls around, we've got something awesome to celebrate. Anyway, we're going to have lots of more stuff happening throughout this year. Live events, uh, some good fun stuff, uh, some new products, some new sponsors, some new things coming your way. So I want you to stay tuned and I want you to get plugged in. And I'm really, really, really happy that you were here with me today. Anyway, I love you guys. I care about you. And I'll see you next time. If you want to be a better man, check out our website, manlyhood.com, for blogs, videos, and more from our Manlyhood team. Men, you can also join our private Facebook group, Manlyhood Man Cave, where you can meet up with a band of brothers who will challenge you and help you on your journey of manhood. This episode is produced by Hatcher Media for manlyhood.com. Be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you're listening to the show. Tune in again for more of the Manlyhood Mancast.